Hi, I'm Tom Melton with Path to Better, taking a look at different ways for us to be better leaders of our lives, our families, our organizations. I want to look at today kind of the way that an organization is built and what are some of the things that help it uh, be a strong organization and uh, things that kind of hinder it from being strong. And the primary model that I uh, use and I'm going to use it today is based on Patrick Lencioni's book, Five Dysfunctions of a Team. So big idea is that we're talking about an organization as a team. And by the way, that's an important distinction. A team is not just a group of people. If you have five people on your staff, that isn't necessarily a team. So Lencioni's focus and my focus in A Path to Better is how do we build a team and how do we make it so that it works and makes it healthy. Lencioni has five uh, pieces to that and he kind of thinks of it in terms of a pyramid. And as you see, a pyramid begins building wider and deeper on the basis, much like if you're building a building, you first build the foundation and if the foundation is good, then you can go to the next step. But it's not like they're not related. You don't just build a foundation and end there. If you're gonna build a building, you wanna have all the pieces, but it does matter the order. So for him, the first uh, piece of that pyramid is what he calls trust, but it's not just trust in general, it's what he calls vulnerability trust. And in vulnerability trust, it means that you are able and the people on your team are able to say what they're really thinking. One of the overriding principles of this and why you would even want a team as opposed to just a bunch of people is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Most of us operate, even if we have a bunch of people, as if the whole is the sum of its parts. But the reality is how do you get more from a team than you do just five people? Well, he is saying that the basis is you build on trust. If you don't have trust, as um, Stephen Covey says in his book, Speed of Trust, that things operate at the speed of trust. The less trust, the longer it takes, the more it costs. Same with an organization, and, and Lencioni talks about vulnerability. So what does that look like? Well, if I uh, come to a meeting and we're gonna talk about the direction of our new business venture, and I say an idea and I'm shut down or through body language or some means, the message is shut up. We don't care what you're saying. Or if it's held against you, typically it's not that overt. It'll just be subtle. Well, in the mind, you think, well, I'm not gonna listen to that guy. So therefore, I'm not gonna uh, engage any further, which takes to the next uh, part of the, the uh, pyramid. And without the ability to say what you're really thinking safely, uh, it, then you aren't going to have a healthy conflict. And healthy conflict is conflict around ideas, not around personalities, around people. A lot of groups have conflict, but they tend to be around personality. So therefore, you don't get the best out of your people. You don't get the best out of the team. When you have healthy conflict, that leads to the third piece, which is commitment. If, you, if I don't think you really care what I'm saying or what I'm thinking, uh, and even if I do, and then we can't, have conflict because the leader, and this often takes place, the leader brings his own stuff into it and says, I don't like conflict. I want everybody to be happy and peaceful. Well, then you don't get the benefit of that. And as a result of that, you don't get commitment. So now I'm not all in because I'm holding back. I'm not gonna say what I really think. I'll do it politically when it's correct. But if I don't, uh, doesn't matter. So you don't get commitment from them. We all often see about a team here in Denver, the Denver Broncos are an example when they talk about having one focus and one commitment to each other. And when we have that, brings us to the fourth, and that's accountability. That when you're all trusting each other, that you can say what you believe, when you have healthy conflict that you work through, you don't hold it against each other, uh, but you get better and you have commitment. We're gonna get in there, and when you're committed as a team, then you hold each other accountable. Most often when we talk about accountability, we think it's the boss's job. Why didn't the boss or the supervisor hold them accountable? And the systems are designed to be accountability. Well, in a team, we hold each other accountable. We're all in it together. And that leads to the final piece, with peace, which is imperative in that we get results. The reason that a team plays football is to win. 
the reason that your company is operating, you ought to be clear about what are the results. Uh, what are we trying to do? And if we don't, if we aren't clear on that, then these things get diminished. But we can be very clear on this and, and not pay attention to these pieces. So this is imperative that we understand this. If you're gonna be leading a team or an organization, you need to understand how it works. Uh, and as a result of that, I encourage you to ask yourself, how safe are you as a leader? When you uh, are leading a team, uh, ask yourself, when I say something, do I get the feedback? Last week we talked about the emperor's clothing and the idea that you need to have feedback in order to grow. Are you building uh, vulnerability trust? And by the way, vulnerability trust does not come without you as the leader being vulnerable. I encourage you to take a look at this, try it on, see what it looks like, practice it. Pay, take the path to, to better. Mm -hmm.